My name is Vava Shantanesian. I'm a third year resident from Northern Community Hospital. And I'm going to be presenting a case of intermittent complete heart block in an Air Force engineer. So I have no disclosures. I mean, it's not a research study, but well, obliged by the format. Okay, so we had a 46 year old uh, male who uh, basically the story started when uh, I saw him in the in my EP rotation, but it seems like he first presented in an ED probably two to three years ago, and he presented there with a chest pain. And it seemed like a non-specific chest pain. It wasn't like a typical uh, heart attack type of chest pain. And at that time, uh, this was the EKG that they found they they had the troponins were negative chest x-ray was negative there were no electrolyte abnormalities at that time potassium was okay magnesium was okay uh are you guys able to see my mouse as i point things out okay yes, we are. Uh, so technically it seems like there's st elevations in lead two for example but if you take the st segment and compare it to uh tp segment it seems like a downward stand thing, so it's not a real ST segment elevation. But anyway, as, as the patient goes to an ED with chest pain, 46 year old man, usually there's a follow up bad patient with a cardiology for further workup after a period of observation. So, after observation and no elevation in troponin and uh, resolution of the chest pain after receiving nitrate and aspirin. Patients saw his PCP and then a cardiologist and they performed an echo and a stress test. And when he saw the cardiology, the cardiology back then stated that patient exercises regularly. Uh, and the stress testing was okay. And in the cardiologist office, patient had a second, deg uh, second degree first type AV blood. Uh, but we recommended not to do any more testing and just continue because patient was having no symptoms. So it passed two years passes and on a wellness visit, patient uh, has an EKG that is showing uh, complete heart blood and uh, he's still asymptomatic. Uh, so he's referred to electrophysiology uh, for further workup. But before that, this is the EKG that we see in the office, uh, what they call uh, complete heart block with uh, intermittent uh, with junctional escape rhythm. You can see there is a difference in the QRSs. There is like the little QRSs, and then there is the big ones. The big ones are not followed by a P wave, so they are considered as junctional rhythms. And the ones that are small, they are like is regular sinus rhythm. And if you look at the previous EKG, you can see that his previous EKG looks like kind of the, uh, the actual sinus rhythm you see here, okay? So initially this was called a complete heart block and he was sent for EP uh, for pacemaker placement. And then uh, the EP did an exercise stress test and the exercise stress test you can see here, uh, initially when the exercise stress test starts, patient has junctional beats and sinus beats, which is considered incomplete heart block, because what it means that there is actually communication between SA node and the ventricle, uh, but it seems like it's not always on. Sometimes it's so slow that the junctional escape rhythm takes on and it the patient is giving the junctional rhythm. So as the patient exercises, you can see he has more and more sinus rhythm. And then finally, he develops a complete sinus rhythm. So it seems like at rest, he's living on junctional rhythm. And then he exercises, he develops sinus rhythm. Uh, so uh, after we uh, talk to him a little bit excessively about his exercise regimen, Seems like he generally uh, ran a lot, like uh, let's say a couple of miles a week. 
on a regular basis and did some weight lifting. Generally, the binding of first and second degree AV block are common in athletes, such as like, bikers, marathon runners, but usually we don't see it in uh, people that just exercise recreation of the body, like a hobby. And even uh, typical athletes, second and third degree AV block are considered abnormal and require further work. Uh, so, in this case, we had what seems like in intermittent complete heart block, which was an interesting diagnosis just from the UKV and the finding that if you want to exercise stress as patient, patient developing sinus rhythm as it's working out. Uh, uh, so, because of this, we decided that this patient does not need a pacemaker. Uh, and there is always the concern that uh, what if this patient develops complete heart block uh, and he's like outside and he's not under care of a doctor, uh, like he's not in a hospital scheme, so he can actually be managing. Uh, so given that the QR, uh, the junctional scape rhythm was a narrow complex, this uh, points out that the origin of the, uh, origin of the complex is very close to the AV node and if he was to develop a sinus, uh, if he was to develop a complete heart block, uh, he would have a rate that would sustain life until he can reach a medical center and have a procedure done. By not intervening in this case, we were able to allow him to continue his career as an effort engineer. And to this day, he's he has had no complaints and the follow-ups have been okay. Uh, and that was uh, my presentation, basically. Any questions? Yeah, so um, do you think you can talk further about the reasoning and safety behind not placing a pacemaker in complete heart block? Uh, so, so technically this is not a complete heart block, it's an intermittent complete heart block. But even in a complete heart block, there are situations that you don't put a pacemaker. You, you put a temporary pacemaker, such as in, in a case of right-sided MI, because sometimes the, the function of the AV node can return. So they do a per, uh, uh, temporary pacemaker and patient sometimes improves. But in this case, you can see that AV node is functioning okay. It's not an AV node problem. Uh, it's, uh, what we call a, a, a para, parasympathetic nervous, nervous system activity. But during my research and looking into literature, it seems like there was animal studies that they uh, denerved the vagus nerve and they saw that bradycardia persists in like mouse that they made run a lot. <laughs> and they said that there's some uh, channel changes in the animals or sinus node or AV node that causes this bradycardia. So in this case, the AV node is functioning well. The patient just does not need that, that much heartbeat to stay alive. That's why he's having no symptoms. So there is no need to put a pacemaker in. And we all know pacemaker has its own complications. It can get infected. It can uh, perforate a septum and the procedure itself is not benign. 